Welcome to White Rock Reporter Radio, White Rock in British Columbia, on the Canadian Riviera. I'm Johan Sandstrom, I'm your host, I'm the producer, I'm the guy to put all the blame on, if you want to. That's wonderful, uh, you are listening to Animals Like Us, an instrumental by Aaron English. And here we got them all, is my friends uh, it's a beautiful day here <laughs> slightly snowy sleet and snow and rain and mild and little chilly plus minus something on this beautiful Wednesday the 19th of December just a few days and we have Christmas Santa Claus and everyone else around the corner coming closed this is the afternoon or evening I should say with this and um, what we are going to do now tonight, uh, I like to ask a few questions and I like to ask you out there. Uh, there is a great, this is based basically on the comparison between our beautiful, this, I would say this 12th largest city in Canada. Do you know what that is? Well, I'm going to tell you exactly what it is. It's actually Surrey. Surrey, Surrey, Surrey. And the second largest city in BC that is Surrey as well now Surrey is as an area of over no a population over 462,000 people it has 317 square kilometers surface to build on and they do a lot Surrey is a very expensive and I said expansive and not expensive city. Now, it's amazing, really. I can help compare to, to beautiful White Rock that uh, I, where I have been staying since 1988. Um, White Rock has 18,000 in population compared to Surrey, 462,000. Uh, White Rock can also compare itself with having five kilometers of area compared to 317 square kilometers. Now we have two industries in White Rock and you should make a note of it. It's important. Tourism, I almost said parking, but that's not fair. That would be transportation. But I would say nothing else but tourism. Oh, hey. Something is happening here. Hello, Johan speaking. Hey, Johan, James, calling. Oh, James, <laughs> you saved me. I almost said I had a few questions to ask. Right now, I'm playing something called Divana Babushkishkan. Uh, you know that must be from a strange country somewhere along. Have you got some? Have you got a few minutes? Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. good. Well, are, you on, are you on the radio now? Well, yeah, I'm on the radio. It's it's. Uh, <laughs> I'm on the internet, and uh, doing oh, yeah. doing a little thing here. Uh, uh, I, I, let's let's do this one. Let 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 the audience listen to this beautiful divana. मैं पागल होई बे तो हिसाब से उड़ा ले जेबे दीवाना 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 
pleasure and surprise. Uh, he's online, of course, with us. Uh, he will be part of this program if he likes to. And uh, welcome, I do say, to you, James Martell. Thank you, Mr. Sandstrom. And Thank you. <laughs> kind of surprising. I call you and I'm on a radio show. Interesting. Yeah, quite interesting. And uh, it seems to be working quite well, I believe. It's, uh, yeah, it's great. It's great the way it should be. Um, we have been... Uh, I don't think, and I don't believe you heard the music, but it was Divana by Babu Kishan. And uh, that was rather oriental, exotic, or whatever. And um, we leave that to the experts. And what I'd like to ask you and repeat, and to these lovely people out there, uh, I'd like to just come up and do the comparison again. Here we compared, Surrey has a population of 462,000. Uh, White Rock has a population of 20,000. Uh, these are approximate figures, by the way. And uh, then we have 317 square kilometers in Surrey, and we have five, I believe, in White Rock. Uh, but we have a pier. <laughs> I'd like to see it from the sunny side. And um, we have two totem poles, and we got uh, two industries, and that is tourism and uh, culture, art, community, etc., etc. Then uh, it's interesting to notice that Surrey is quite a big uh, entity. Uh, Surrey is the 12th largest city in all of Canada and the okay. second largest city in BC. What do you have to say about that, James Martel? Well, I've grown up in Surrey my entire life. I love Surrey. I know many nooks and crannies. And when I was a kid, crawled through many gullies and adventured around on my bike for miles and miles and miles with uh, our friends and uh, I think uh, you know I think Surrey is, is a great place it is uh, and it is very I said previously in the program I didn't mean to sound like I said expensive I meant expansive it's expanding it's growing uh, leaps and bounds and uh, many prominent buildings are already erected and built and constructed and everything else and then there are some new ones coming i believe that coast capital savings is going to open up has already secured land and everything else and be right in the middle of the city center of surrey coast capital savings that is the uh, i believe that is also the second largest uh, uh, not coast capital savings but the bank let's call it bank uh, in canada so, um, uh, they do a tremendous work here. A, Surrey has a very large city, and uh, uh, there's obviously lots of people. I don't know the figure of employees, but uh, that can be, you can take that another time. Uh, what you were saying, uh, you are based in Surrey, and uh, you like it. 
Now, in comparison to uh, White Rock, that you also live more or less inside, uh, right on the border, right? Well, yeah, we live down in Sosur area, and, you know, I'm not a big fan of borders, period, <laughs> to be real honest. Uh, I think uh, they, we could use a little less, you know, a little few less borders, including the one between British Columbia and Washington State, which I think is a little bit overkill, quite frankly, in this day and age. They're trying to save people, save themselves from letting nasty Canadians into the U.S., and we're trying to save ourselves from allowing nasty Americans into Canada, and I think for the most part, uh, so much of it could be disbanded, and borders to me are not something that uh, I'm overly a big fan of. You know, frankly, it's interesting what you are saying because I can go back to all the way 1956. I only had a piece of paper that said where I was living in Seattle with my uncle in those days, and I just came in, and the only thing I faced was a, a beautifully red dress in the surge and the, with the riding mountain police there, and that was all I saw. And, of course, I was looking for my papers, and when I was turning, twisting my head, <laughs> I was staring a big horse right in the face because it was halfway into my car. <laughs> that was my first approach with the border of, I think it must have been Douglas Crossing in those days. Uh, but, uh, you know, I don't know. It's very, I think it's very easy to fall in love with Canada uh, and BC, I would say, in particular, because it is a very, very, well, it's, it's pretty much, it's a paradise. Uh, someone said to me uh, another day in paradise, and I think that that's pretty true. Now, uh, we don't like borders. We are very much, we have doctors without borders, and we have nurses without borders, and we have uh, scammers without borders, and all kinds of weird entities without borders. and. Um, now we are facing a different uh, society today. Things have changed in 20 and 30 and 40 and 50 years, which you have no reason to believe. I have no reason to believe that you know what that means, but uh, <laughs> you're, you're a pretty young man. <laughs> but you have traveled a lot and uh, you also know a little what's going on. Well, my, my big thing with the Greater Vancouver area, and I was fortunate enough to be born Vancouver General Hospital has been around for a little while. I'm not that young. I just had my 50th birthday not too long ago. And I'm actually quite disappointed in the entire area, to be real frank. I think we're, I don't know what the powers, you know, that be are up to, but this mass influx of new population that is just completely overwhelming our infrastructure uh, has got me, co you know, bamboozled a little bit. I don't quite see, other than maybe they're looking for tax revenues, what the end game is here because we're, bur we're bursting at the seams. We're building new bridges, we're building new highways, we've got a new connector from Roberts Bank over to Highway 1, we've got the new uh, Portman Bridge, we've got SkyTrain that they're trying to figure out ways to pay for. There's just infrastructure requirements all over the lower mainland now just because of this massive influx of people that have been coming into the province pretty much since 86 when, when Vancouver got onto the big world stage with, with Expo, Expo 86, and then follow that up with uh, the grand touring that we did for the Winter Olympics. Vancouver's been very well positioned and very well presented to the world as a destination and a place, a great place to live. And not to mention our politicians, right from the federal level down, are in other countries promoting us as a great place to live. And that's, they're true, it's true, it is a wonderful place to live. But what about the infrastructure? What about this overburdening of our resources? And all of the main news these days, it seems, locally, is, is, is that. Today the Portman Bridge got shut down because of some issues with ice. Completely snarled the traffic for hours. And as nice as this was, I think back to the early 80s when I graduated from North Delta Senior Secondary and how quiet and peaceful it was all around the lower mainland and you compare it to what it is today, I can't imagine, quite frankly, and I promise you I won't be around in this area when it happens, uh, what it'll look like in 20 years from now. 
I'll be living somewhere else, I guarantee you that, because if, if the current rate of population moving into this area is going to just completely overwhelm us. And uh, I don't want to be any part of it, quite frankly. Now, but that must mean that what we are talking about is the squeeze or the balloon factor, call it whatever you like. Um, I, I, I see... I, I see the existence even of white rock as we have seen it, as I have seen it. I saw white rock, and I'm dating myself now, I saw white rock 1957, when it was just had just become a city. It used to be a Ward 7, they call it. I didn't know what that was in those days, but when you say Ward 7, I'm thinking of an insane asylum. <laughs> you know, Ward 7, that must be, that's a dangerous place to be in Ward 7, I don't know. <laughs> but without uh, being too, trying to be too sarcastic or funny here, but the point is, um, in all these years, when I came here and I pumped up the gas, one of these old ones, you know, you pump it up and then you take up the hose and you open up the car and uh, the old Chevy and uh, that took place somewhere opposite uh, uh, Washington Grill, I believe it was. Someone told me it must have been there. It couldn't have been down at the Sandpiper, but then, no, whatever. So so I thought that was, it was a great experience for me as a young man. And I was very, very young, trust me. <laughs> and uh, my car was overheating and all the other things that have been <laughs> part of my life. So, you know, when you think of the squeeze factor here, what do you think will happen to a place like White Rock with its own fire department, its own police department, its own library or, uh, you know, and all these various services that we are building up for an elderly population. People are becoming older and older and older. That is the population pyramid that goes the same thing all over Canada I believe uh, that we are getting older older and uh, that that's the truth we have to face well I know since we moved here we moved from Abbotsford and right in uh, you know late 2001 uh, no I guess it was late 2000 so we've been here for about 12 years now and just you take a look at the South Surrey White Rock area, the peninsula and there's even the surrounding suburbs of that, I don't know what the increase in population uh, has been since we've gotten here or since we've moved here but it has been substantial uh, I do remember you take down by South Point there there was nothing but fields and farmland Right. and bush and a few odd houses sprinkled with lots of acreage and now you drive just down in that area down around the keg and the sheer density of people in those condos and those homes is is staggering compared to what it was and you there's all kinds of these subdivisions and these high density condos going in uh, all over the place and you get over to to the new area of Grandview Heights and they've just begun there they have just begun you take a look at the development plan that's going to happen around uh, in some of those fields and some of those uh, you know agricultural areas it's, 10 years from now, probably sooner, those are going to be houses, condos, apartment buildings, and it's already started on mass scale in a lot of those areas. So we're already bottlenecked in so many areas. I know just in in the Grandview Heights area where you've got that little bridge that crosses the highway yep. uh, that doesn't have an on-ramp or an off-ramp, which is another topic. I, I must be rude and uh, doing the break here. Is that okay with you? Yep. Sure. Thank you. On the air again, James Martel, uh, it was great that uh, you called up like this and uh, interrupted uh, our little broadcast that gave some life to the show. And uh, I'm going to take the liberty of uh, listening to Sad-Eyed Annabelle. <laughs> that means that we have some uh, people, in this case, that wanted to hear Sad-Eyed Annabelle because I played it last night, and um, it was actually a person that said, hey, that was a very, very nice, I'd like to hear that again. So I said, well, why not? That's the thing to do. Don't you know Thing or two about love, I won't try to slow 
only time, the only reason that you follow me around is the tale of sad eyed Annabelle. She will never break your heart. She will never rip you apart. She will tell you stories of love, and you will fall for everything. Says in the back of your head, I will lay to whisper in your ear. It's not the first time. From here, there is no easy out. Listen to me when I say I can help you find a way out of this tragic design. She will never find out through all these lies. Sad eyed Annabelle, her eyes are still sad. It's a music piece of Alexa Wilkinson. You're listening to White Rock Reporter Radio. I'm Johan Sandstrom. And uh, this is to the beautiful 19th of December. And uh, well, of course, I'm sitting around here waiting for Santa Claus. And I guess I have to wait. <laughs> he very rarely shows up to me anymore. My kids are way off in various countries and so on. However, we have the, uh, the savior here online, Mr. James Martell. Are you there? I am. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to say something, if I may inflict that here. Um, we were over at the Morgan Crossing. We talked about the density of the condos and, and properties, apartment buildings built and, uh, you know, in a very short period of time, I think five, six years, we have seen this growing tremendously and to the detriment of all the beautiful small little shops and uh, quaint uh, boutiques or whatever here in White Rock, it has become a threat. Uh, in other words, it, 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 it has inflicted negative on, on, on the, for the merchants in White Rock. And, and, and I'm, I'm looking around at these, you have London drugs and you have all kinds of, uh, frankly, there is a bug, very attractive stores in the neighborhood of Morgan Crossing. Oh, and I'm actually surprised to see those style of stores come back because whatever happened to the indoor mall. So I think they've done a beautiful job of designing some of those uh, those new little areas with the especially across from London Drugs where they've got the new uh, little grocery store in there and they've got all the specialty shops and boutiques and then they have residential upstairs. I think that's why. I think that's a smart move. Uh, my beef is is the sheer density of it all. Is why. Why, why, why are we pouring the people into the lower mainland here at such a high rate? And thousand, I think it's thousand, thousand people per week. I mean, it's, it's in, in, interestingly enough, I was speaking with uh, an immigration lawyer at a Christmas party on Monday night, and just happened to be sitting with him, and he's very excited because as of the first of the year, as of sometime in January. There's three brand new immigration laws that are coming into effect that will allow them to crank it up even more. So I don't think we've seen anything yet when it comes to the sheer volume of people that are going to be uh, moving into the area here for sure. But don't you think that uh, economies uh, almost demand this type of uh, this type? And I mean the model of expansion. You you want 
commerce you want the density of both stores and quality as well as you want density here in living so you have the population you have the customers basically door to door to the merchant uh, there is some concentration going on here which I am not capable of uh, having any <laughs> objective views on uh, I can be subjective and that's no problem and I can be a big problem <laughs> in myself but you know you know what I'm talking about I'm talking about the you talk about the density I, I talk about the, the same thing but I say concentration uh, it, there must be a retail uh, yeah, it's it's it's. Uh, I mean, look at restaurants here. There's. It seemed to me when they opened that they were over-establishing over, uh, you know, with restaurants. But White Spot has a beautiful spot on 24th and 160th, and across you have Walmart across there, and the small little shops where you can have soup and bread and uh, bakery and. Uh, yeah, there is a lot of good stuff all around this, but. Is this really what we wanted to live within and amidst, so to speak? I, you know, I, I don't mind what they've done there. I think it's, uh, I think they've done a great job. I think uh, it's probably got a lot of benefits to it. And I also don't mind that they're competing with White Rock and with other small businesses. Competition should increase the quality of service all around for, for the people who are making the purchases. And we can go anywhere to shop. So I'm all for good old competition. I'm very pro-business, but I'm also very pro-competition because I think competition sharpens, uh, you know, the business offer. And what happens, though, and in an area like this where we have such so much population concentrated, as in your words, so heavily, because there's so many customers walking through the doors anyways just because of the sheer volumes, then businesses get lax so the customer service falls off. And I think we, we see that all over the place now where we don't have the service that, uh, you know, we once did have, we once had in the past. And, and that's unfortunate. And in my mind, that's in a lot of cases just because, uh, you know, there's just too many, and some business owners would probably argue with me, but there's, there's just so many customers in the area that it's not that hard to attract them if you've got a decent product. No, but, um, you know, I, th I think it's something wrong in the planning, if I may be a little critical to whatever goes on in White Rock, and I take the liberty of being that, because I think it doesn't really, there is a bunch of established businesses that really have no business to be so many of the same thing, duplication, that's my big, that's, that's, that's the beef I have with White Rock, duplication. You know, when they are stacking fashion stores and they're basically selling the same thing, when you have an ice, when you, in, in half a block, a normal block, say, at about 100 yards, you have three or four ice cream stores, gelato, call it whatever you like. I think that's, that's not really fair. It doesn't, I mean, they're basically, the, the consumer. Not fair, not fair in whose mind? Well, I think it's not fair for the consumer. Uh, I mean, for, well, fair and fair, maybe that's the wrong way of, for me expressing myself. But what I'm saying is that it is obviously difficult uh, if you are a gelato engineer, I used to say, and you do ice cream or gelato. It's basically a small difference. I, I really don't know the difference, but I prefer gelato. But the point, anyhow, is that people are fighting uh, about the customer. Uh, there is sandwich boards up and around, anything from umbrellas to whatever. It is an absolutely uncalled for competition. It couldn't be, it's not beneficial, it's not benefit, there is no benefit, they're all the same. So what's the big but deal? You, you can't, you're not gonna have a, we don't need a, a business place that says, hey, you can only have a, an ice cream stand every so, you know, you know, every three blocks. You can only have... No, no exactly, but you have... Welcome back to communist, communism, where we have only design one type of car because it just makes more sense. Yeah, I, I realize what you're saying, but that's not, I'm not going to... I, 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 I am from Sweden, all right, but... <laughs> I lived over pretty soon 30 years in North America, so, um, and I'm such a young guy. <laughs> the point here is, I don't think strata units, they do say, 
we only want in our strata here on this block we want one fashion store we want one little bistro we would like to have a little clothing store there and a little boutique there and on the corner we can have some coffee and some bread and maybe soup and around the bends we can have in the same strata if we take and accept uh, French slice pizza, for instance, as a pizza and, 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 and a little shopping mall, uh, beach mart, just around, you know, on the same thing. I, I think that's great, but next door you find two, three similar that they're basically eating on each other. Eating meaning that they're it's such a fierce competition and, 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 um, they should be given, they, they should be, I don't say it needs to be a controlled thing, but it is, already is a control by the strata. And it is not, it, and it's not managed well, can I put it that way, instead of... Well, the strata is a different animal than, say, the beach area of White Rock. Strata is an independent society corporation that's set up to help manage their own private building. That's what I'm talking where, uh, about. I'm talking just about the waterfront where you've got all kinds of buildings competing side by side and there's not an umbrella strata, you know, dictating what people can and can't do. Uh, I, I got to correct you. I got to correct you here. There is a bunch of residents uh, above and they are monitored and they do say uh, as a strata they pretty much govern what can be put in there. And that can vary depending on who has the strata, but that's the way it is. And um, sure, but that's only for their particular building. And the building right next door is completely different. And it could be an ice cream shop in one building, and right next door there could be another one. Yeah. And that's just the good old benefits of competition. This is I get I, again. I'm pro business, but I'm also pro competition. So you can't really have good solid businesses without competition. No, 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 no. It should be competition, but it's too close. Right. It's a, yeah. So um, either it's either it's either all in or not. You can't have competition, real competition, and then say, "Oh, but we're only going to have three stores and the sell ice cream." No. That's um, not true competition. Well, uh, you know, I, 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 I that's 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 correct uh, to a certain extent. But uh, since we don't have all the facts in the in the case in front of us, I have a hard time to argue for it or against it. I will just be happy. Uh, listening to what you're saying because it makes sense. Now, going back maybe and leaving the seaside, like I like to call it, instead of the waterfront, I maintain that the waterfront is indicating a very industrial area that you can see in Seattle and uh, you name it. But uh, seaside is for me the correct name on this beautiful piece of land that is, of course, it's fronting the water, but it is a seaside with beaches. A waterfront is not in. The, it does not indicate any beaches per se. When you come and look at the map, and you are coming across the border, going north, and you swing in, if you are lucky, you can see a big billboard saying, "Come, what is it? Buy, play, uh, stay, and all that stuff." Uh, for the tone of about. Forty, fifty thousand dollars. That's a pretty feisty billboard that very few see. I understand. Oh, well, like you know, like businesses, communities have to compete as well. Yeah, it's 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 you know, especially with White Rock being independent. Now they have to, you know, they, they do have to compete, and they do have to drive businesses into their community because they too need the tax base, especially because they're so small. And you know, you started off with the. the, the differences in size between Surrey and White Rock, that uh, White Rock is so small compared to Surrey. I was actually surprised to hear the population differences. I know Surrey is way larger, but I didn't quite know it was that. I didn't realize population of White Rock was only around 20,000. Well, you know, it's incredible that uh, 462, I bet you don't know that in about two, two years, it is much, much, much closer, basically half a million in population. Uh, Five hundred thousand. Surrey. In Surrey, yeah, it's four hundred sixty-two now, and they're growing by leaps and bounds. People are coming in here. Uh, you know, I'm not talking about the BC, the province. I'm talking about Surrey. 
that's how quick it is being and and there's lots of opportunities to work and why shouldn't you live close to work when there is so much construction going on and uh, so many work opportunities in Surrey so I think that uh, it seems to me that the, the mayor is driving a a busload of good stuff <laughs> Kind of put it like the bus load, but uh, it, it's really a bunch of good stuff going on uh, for Surrey right now. Oh, they got all kinds of stuff going on. Yeah, Surrey's only there so large that, uh, that, in fact, quite frankly, they don't have any choice in the matter either with the amount of people that are coming into the neighborhood. So they have to they have to get everything firing on one signal, I have one cylinder. Of course, uh, you know. It sounds like they do have a little bit of revenue behind them, thank goodness. Otherwise, and they've got land now, so that helps. But even Surrey, as spread out as it is, are having real challenges with traffic. Just getting through Surrey at rush hour now, through some of these back streets or back roads like 128th Avenue or 132nd, you could be held up in there for half an hour, 40 minutes, and really not get too far. I heard today one, you know, in one instance, because the bridge was closed, the new Portman Bridge was closed, uh, because of the ice falling, backed yeah. things up. By the time people got through, it took them hours to get through Surrey, hours and hours. Yeah, but you see, this infrastructure, I think, is not so well thought of, because what about buses? What about uh, trams, trains, and uh, lightweight trains? And, you know, it, it, it's incredible when you see these lineup of hundreds and hundreds and thousands of cars. Yeah. And what they do, what they deliver. You're talking about the, the, the carbon dioxide, the footprint, uh, uh, and all that stuff, you know, environment and so on. This is not really, it's not healthy to spend a good day inside in the job and then all of a sudden roll over and drive home in all that puke, if I can use that name for about the <laughs> gases. I mean, yep. you know, if you really think of it. Um, oh, I do. It, it's, uh, I, I know you do because <laughs> you have sh chosen a lifestyle and an occupation and a profession that does not, you are not depending on it. We are not necessarily, if we work on the internet and sit by a computer, we are pretty free of choosing our own environment. We are not sure, necessarily. Sure, I, I, I woke up this morning turning on the news and hearing of the schmas in traffic because of the snow. Yeah. And it's like, I'm just going to go downstairs and get some coffee. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. And didn't have to go anywhere. Working from home is, is a great way to go. And I think there's so many, you know, smart things people could do in that regard. Uh, you know, just less commute, more working at home today. We always talk about telecommuting. It never really has caught on to near the level that it could. And, you know, and back to the cars and back to, uh, you know, the over, you know, use of our roads. Yeah, when I, I was see. in Germany back in 2005, 2006, I was over there with uh, doing a tour of one of the hosting companies. And it was in a little town, it was my, and it was my first trip to Europe in this little town called Karlsruhe. Karlsruhe. Uh, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> and it was just a beautiful, picturesque little German town, just gorgeous. And little and little shops and little buildings and no big high rises and nicely laid out, lots of greenery, beautiful little campus on in the middle of the city for the college. And uh, the hosting company's head office was right in the middle of it, one-on-one -on -one hosting. And right through the town, and all the little towns around there, they have these little trains that just go from town to town and neighborhood to neighborhood, picking up and dropping off people. And, and there wasn't a lot of cars on the road, and I figured, what a smart thing to do. All these beautiful little, fun little trains. And I just got on them one day, and I just rode them all over the place. And if you think about any one of our communities in Surrey, we could have trains running down 132nd and 128th and all these little areas that uh, could be moving people around far more efficiently than backing them up car after car after. I heard one guy said it's the longest parking lot he'd ever seen in his life today because nobody was moving. No, no. So I, I think we just got to all shake our heads a little bit in this little mainline and you know come to terms with what the heck we are doing here and because 20 years from now there will be no lifestyle here. It'll be a, an overpopulated mess. 
Yeah, I think that what you are saying about uh, transportation here, that is, I see very little of futuristic thinking behind the plans. Uh, they seem to be rejecting trains, uh, lightweight rails, uh, they are sticking with buses, and they say, oh, it's inexpensive because now the natural gas is so good, blah, 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 and, so and then they have other technologies for driving buses, but, you know, it's, it's not really, if, 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 it's, it's, it's something wrong here, there must be something more exciting, if I could say that, and, and uh, there are other ways of transporting people back and forth to work and so on it's a uh, shuttle buses of uh, different types so to speak but it could be done uh, i would like to um, take this opportunity to uh, finish this uh, and let you think about how we can conclude this animated <laughs> con conversation uh, i want you to hear about french love here by a fellow by name or uh, no being frank so that's is that okay we finish with a little music here then we come back and and make a conclusive end to this 45 minutes conversation to be That's the French love by being frank. And you have been listening to White Rock Reporter. Johan Sandstrom is my name. You are connecting with Canada. You are connecting with the world. And uh, I'm going to ask uh, Mr. James Martel here um, to give us a few small little conclusive words of wisdom here. <laughs> uh, I think it's yeah. Well, you know, frankly, you 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 are truly, you are you are born here in Surrey, and if I'm not incorrect, I think your wife Arlene is born in Peace Arch News. Uh, P <laughs> Sorry, Peace Arch Hospital. <laughs> I, I don't know why I have this Peace Arch News on my mind. It's one of the local papers for you people that are not uh, informed what the White Rock stands for. Besides its population of 20,000 people, something and five acres, and uh, don't play around with us because we have our own fire department and we have our own police station, and, or rather RCMP station, and uh, uh, we have a library. We have a beautiful pier, and lots of beaches, and some sandy and some rocky, and uh, uh, lots of beautiful restaurants where people can eat. But we are weather dependent, I conclude by saying, and that, that is what you say, James, isn't that a little sad that we are so depending on the weather? Oh, well, yeah, that's, uh, well, unfortunately that is true for many businesses. Uh, 
it would be a tough, tough business to run and manage, uh, especially the restaurants and those businesses that depend on people coming into White Rock based on the weather, of course, in the summertime. When summer is uh, really, uh, you know, full bloom, we got lots of sunshine, people do arrive and they come in and they patronize the local restaurants and establishments and everybody's very happy. Unfortunately, though, if we get a few weekends of rain that we weren't expecting or summer begins a little later or ends a little bit sooner than normal because of our you know, our climate, then uh, businesses, you know, they can hurt a little, so, or a lot, at some particular time, so uh, running companies that are based upon weather is something